It's 2004, and I'm sitting there in my house watching the Disney Channel. What show, you may ask? Oh, well, of course, Kim Possible, one of the best Disney shows of all time. But all of these commercials, they're driving me crazy. I'm tired of seeing all these lame products. Like seriously, an oven that you can use injection molding to make plastic bugs and burn your house down at the same time? That's not exciting. I mean, I'll probably only have that toy a day or two before I have to go to the hospital because of its lack of safety features. I don't want that. Bro, Airhog's helicopters? Those things are weak. You crash them into a fence and they break in one hit. Why would I want something so temporary? You know, I need something more exciting. Something that's gonna last me a little while longer. Huh, what's this? Ever wondered what it would be like to live life as a toon? Of course well, I have. here's your chance. Jump online and straight into Toontown. Toontown? the city limits are as wide as your imagination. Start by creating your own unique identity and turn yourself into the toon you always wanted to be. Sweet. That's now the best thing I could have ever asked for. And that Man. it was. For the one month that I had access to Toontown back in the day, it was so much fun. The amount of memories I have of this game are absolutely insane, and honestly, I would have thought that I played it for years, not just a single month. I remember going into my parents' room with my brother and plugging in the ethernet cable just to hear that terrible sound of dial-up. Yes, we had dial-up there until like 2007, it was absolutely ridiculous. But even though we had a trash internet connection, it did not stop me from having a good time. It was quite a bit of fun, and the fact that you could play live with other people just blew my mind. And like I said, it was a great time. But great things don't last forever, and I grew up and moved on to more mature things, like Club Penguin and Neopets. And Toontown kind of drifted into the back of my mind for quite a while just to be completely forgotten about. The game ended up closing down in 2013, and other than hearing word of it, I really didn't think nothing of it until all the way into 2018 when I decided to make a video on why it was so good and what happened to it. It was cool to look back at such a nostalgic experience and see what happened to it and what went wrong. But I barely played the game. I pretty much only played it to get footage and that doesn't really count. So after recently checking out that there's a remastered fan run version of the game, I decided to go back and play it to see how well it's held up and how good it actually was. We're gonna look at it with rose-colored glasses in today's video where we revisit Toontown in 2020. So to begin, I downloaded the updated version of the game from online. And keep in mind, I had no idea how active this was. I didn't know if there was 100 users, 1000 users, or 10,000 users. Honestly, any of those numbers would completely blow my mind. Considering this game came out in 2003, it's crazy to me that people even still care about it, which is why I thought it was amazing to begin with that there was even still fan-run servers. So as soon as I loaded in, the first thing that I was faced with was the Make a Toon screen, where I get to make my very own tune to dive into the world of Toontown. Character customization was super simple and easy to do. I mean, considering that this game was aimed towards, like, seven-year-olds, so... Thank god it is, because seven-year-old me would not be able to know a bunch of complicated character creation mechanics. You started out by choosing your gender, and then you got to go in and customize your outfit and choose what animal type you are. There was a mouse, a horse, a rabbit, and all types of other animals, but I eventually decided on a maroon crocodile. And I went with the classy name of Dr. Banjo Fuzzy Gabber. I mean, just picture this guy, he looks like a doctor. He looks like he'd be sitting on his private lawn in his gated golf course community just watching all the peasants drive by. Exactly the vibe I was going for. So the first thing that I did when I loaded in was go through the tutorial, and the tutorial basically gives you the story and the gist of the game. Basically, you're in this happy little place called Toontown, where you're just living your life and messing around with your friends. But unfortunately, all these greedy corporate cogs are coming around and they're messing up all types of stuff. You gotta get rid of these guys, and the way to do that is by using gags. You know, things to make them laugh, and, you know, you can't laugh as a corporate guy, what? You have a meter at the bottom called your laugh meter, which is basically like your happiness, and as soon as you get hit by attacks by these corporate dudes, your happiness goes down. It makes sense. It's honestly a super cool theme, and looking at it at an older age, there's so much more to it that I don't remember. Like, all I remember are there's these dudes who are like robots, and then you like throw stuff at them. But I did not realize how deep this story actually is. But yeah, basically I go through the tutorial, fight one of these cogs, and learn how things work, and then I'm on my own in the wonderful world of Toontown. 
Well, not completely on my own, I am joined by my friend Thomas, who is a Toontown expert. And turns out, this game is hella popular. There was like 5,000 people on just when I was recording, which was at like 1am on like a Sunday. Absolutely crazy to me. Apparently the developers of this version of Toontown put in a lot of work, like, this isn't just a simple little reskin of the stuff that was going on before. There's actually quite a few new mechanics and like, they've actually expanded the content which I think is absolutely crazy. Because of nostalgia, you could easily just throw up the old game and be fine, but they went the extra step and I think that's why the community is still active. So back to the game, there's a couple main aspects of it. First of all are jelly beans. These are your currency, these are how you buy your gags that you use to defeat the cogs. How do you earn jelly beans you may ask? Either by the trolley, doing games, or by fishing, which we'll get to later. So of course, what sounds more fun than games, dude? Games are my favorite thing, I'm playing a game, how meta is that? So I hopped on the trolley to see what these were about. I mean, I played the Club Penguin games back in the day and I love those, those are pretty cool. There's like Coffee Stacker and like the tubing one, pretty well designed. Let's see what these ones are like. Wow, this is, this is really fun. Wow, look at this Pac-Man game. This is, uh, this is fun. I may be a bit biased, but uh, I'm starting to think this game is made for kids. But that doesn't stop me from playing it, and apparently it also doesn't stop the other thousands of people who continue to play it. To be honest, this game has a pretty cool little community, and I was going around and meeting people here and there. They were pretty chill for the most part. Um, they seem very immersed into what they're doing, which is just something that I couldn't really get a grasp on, just because I'm not involved in that community. But it was cool to see a group of people who actually enjoyed a game and were like close-knit and felt like friends. I mean, that's what Toontown was about back in the day, so why should that change just because people got older? But Thomas and I started doing quests to do the main grinding aspect of this game, which is where you defeat cogs, level up, unlock new gags, and continue to defeat cogs. There's different regions, like Toontown Central, which is like the central starter area. There's like a Minnie Mouse, a Mickey Mouse, there's a Donald Duck, like a bunch of different themed areas based on Disney characters. And each one is progressively harder. We spent most of our time in the starter area because again, we weren't very far into this game. And it was pretty cool checking out what everything did. As we fought through some of these guys, I continued to level up and eventually I needed to get more gags, so I went and tried fishing. Fishing was okay, it was a little clunky, but I'm not expecting it to be a god tier fishing mechanic. You know, I'm not expecting 50 different types of fish with weights and rarities, like, it's okay, it's a, yeah. But there was something weighing me down in the back of my mind. I vaguely remember the idea of kart racing. It was a super polished and unique mechanic where you can race go-karts for money and have the time of your life. Thomas, it is time to do it once and for all. So we bought the starter cars and decided to go on the practice track for kart racing and it was the most exhilarating experience of my life. Just kidding. Hey did I mention this game's made for 8? Regardless, it was cool to check it out. Uh, this was definitely one of the sections where I used the rose colored glasses because I believed it to be way better than it actually was. But it's okay, I'm not being judgmental, maybe somebody will enjoy this. Probably not, but maybe. We went back and continued to do a couple of quests just to progress our way through the story a little bit. I didn't realize how grindy this game was. Um, I can't believe that young me had the patience to grind through this game, but I respect the people who do because this is a lot of work. Every single time you throw a gag, that gag category levels up by like one or two points. So sometimes when you're a high level, it takes 2000 plus throws to level it up again, which is absolutely insane. But I spent a decent amount of time doing it and did unlock a couple of new gags, mainly just in the two categories that I started with because I had to collect like 15 film things in order to get a new category and that was going to take way too long and that was time that I didn't really have. After a little while I decided to take another break and try to make some friends on these servers because like I said, it's a close knit community and maybe I want to see what it's about. So I did it in the best way that I could because <laughs> I didn't want to ask a parent to turn on my chat settings. <laughs> my parents are sleeping, it's past their bedtime. So I just made do with the quick little commands called like safe chat or speed chat or something. There's like a set list of things that you can say. So I did what everybody would assume you would want to do, bro. I asked them to go to the playground and play some games. Hey bro, you want to go in the trolley? Sure man, follow me, let's go, let's hop on real quick. 
Okay, it's gonna count down and aha, pranked loser. Enjoy playing games by yourself. Man, this is gonna be so much. Ha, losers, you're going by yourself too. Let's just say I wasn't the best at making friends. I, I just ditched everybody on the trolley and made them suffer through the boring mini games by themselves. I'm not gonna go through Pac-Man again, bro. That was miserable. You know, you know how difficult that was? So I just kept going on the trolley and just forcing everybody to play mini games by themselves. You know, just like a good citizen would do in any gaming community. Eventually, people weren't having it anymore, and they were like, bro, like, screw off, I'm just gonna ignore you, you're annoying. And I get it, I was. But I had another trick up my sleeve that they would never expect. You know, maybe you don't want to be friends with me after I just convince you to go on the trolley by yourself. But if you're not gonna be friends with me, I'm not gonna let you be friends with anyone. So, I did the insufferable thing, and started asking people if they want to go ride some go-karts. Hey bro, you want to go to the racetrack? Hey bro, let's go race some go-karts. Saw dude, go-karts? And I continued to do this until everybody left the server. They all left me and it became a barren wasteland with nobody online. It was that simple, go-karts were that bad that I could just simply ask and cause everybody to leave. And after hours and hours of countless research, I realized that this is what killed the old Toontown game. I'm gonna expose myself right now. That one month that I had the game, I did exactly that, and it spread like a virus throughout the entire community that within the next 10 years would shut down the game by causing every single player to leave. Go-kart racing was so hated that the entire community shut down and Disney was like, nah fam, we can't handle this anymore. And I single-handedly did it by doing the same thing that I did in this video. So, Toontown Online rewritten, your fate is now in my hands. I may have started something that you can't stop. But for real though, revisiting this game was pretty cool. I wouldn't say it was the most fun experience, but it's not for everyone. I mean, it's a grind and there's a lot to do, but it's just not my style. I'll put a download link to Toontown rewritten in the description if you're interested in checking it out. Because like I said, it's always fun to go back and look at things with your lovely rose-tinted glasses from your childhood. Looking at stuff with rose-colored glasses is always fun. You get to see what you liked about things that were so amazing back in the day. But sometimes you gotta look into the present and enjoy the things that are amazing right now. One of those things is the sponsor of today's video, Raycon. Raycon's a brand of wireless earbuds that look, sound, and feel absolutely amazing. These things sound outstanding, and they're less than half the price of other brands on the market that you may be familiar with. Ever since I got my pair a little while ago, I've been using these for everything I do that requires earbuds. They are 100% my new go-to option, and I'm not just saying that, I actually mean it. Raycons are great for working from home, working out, and listening to music or podcasts for hours without bothering your roommates or the people around you. I mean, we're all stuck in quarantine right now, so you might as well enjoy yourself by listening to things in privacy. Their Everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet, with 6 hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit. And have you ever seen such a beautiful set of colors? If you're interested in purchasing the best pair of wireless earbuds that you'll ever own, visit buyraycon.com slash robocast to check them out and support the channel. It'll be linked in the description below. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for today's video, so I hope you all enjoyed. If you enjoyed, please drop a like and subscribe with the notification bell on. I will see you guys next time, and peace.